How to Guard Your Heart Against Negative Influence Written and published by God Daily News Introduction Imagine that your heart is a precious gem, more valuable than all the treasures of the world combined. Guarding it against negative influence isn't just a good idea, it's a biblical instruction. Proverbs 4 verse 23 warns us to protect our hearts above all else, for they are the wellsprings of life. But how exactly can you achieve that? The Bible provides a blueprint, a step-by-step guide, if you will, to help you erect a fortress around your heart. With scripture as your foundation, prayer as your watchtower, and faith as your shield, you'll be well on your way. Ready to explore how. Chapter 1. Acknowledge Negative Influences. While you may often overlook it, Acknowledging the presence of negative influences in your life is the first vital step toward guarding your heart, as outlined in Proverbs 4 verse 23, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. These negative influences could be people, habits, or even thoughts that don't align with the teachings of the Bible and God's will for your life. They can drain your spiritual energy, rob you of peace, and eventually, lead you down a path away from God's purpose for your life. Think of it this way, if you're unaware of the presence of a thief, how can you protect your possessions? Similarly, if you're unaware of the negative influences in your life, how can you guard your heart against them? You can't fight an enemy you don't recognize. Consider Apostle Paul's words in Ephesians 6 verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This verse reminds you that your struggle isn't just physical, but spiritual. To identify these negative influences, you need to reflect on your life, your relationships, and your habits. Prayerfully ask God for discernment to see clearly what's influencing you negatively. Once you've identified them, you've taken the first step in guarding your heart. Remember, you're not alone in this battle. God's Word and His Spirit are your allies in this spiritual endeavor. With His help, you can guard your heart from negative influences. Chapter 2. Set Boundaries with Wisdom Drawing the line in the sand, you must use divine wisdom to set boundaries that shield you from harmful influences, as Proverbs 22 verse 3 advises, The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. These boundaries aren't physical walls, but rather boundaries of the heart and mind, designed to keep out harmful influences and allow in what's wholesome and good. Setting boundaries with wisdom begins with discerning what's beneficial and what's detrimental to your spiritual growth. This discernment, as referenced in Hebrews 5 verse 14, is a skill that mature Christians develop, but solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. It's like cultivating a taste for healthy food over junk food. You'll need to train your heart and mind to desire what's spiritually nourishing and reject what's spiritually junk. Next, stand firm in your boundaries. The Apostle Paul instructs in Ephesians 6 verse 13, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand, it's not always going to be easy. You might face opposition, misunderstanding, even ridicule. But remember, you're protecting your heart, the wellspring of life, Proverbs 4 verse 23. Lastly, remember that setting boundaries with wisdom doesn't mean isolating yourself from the world. Christ called us to be in the world but not of it, John 17 verse 16. So engage with wisdom, discernment, and the full armor of God, standing firm in the truth and love of Christ. Chapter 3. Seek Guidance from Scripture. To guard your heart effectively, it's important to seek guidance from Scripture, the ultimate source of wisdom and truth. When you're unsure where to turn or what to believe, the Bible serves as a reliable compass, illuminating the path of righteousness and steering you away from harmful influences. Remember, it's not enough to simply read the Bible, you need to reflect on its teachings and apply them in your life. As you explore scripture, you'll encounter profound truths that will shape your values and guide your decisions. 
Psalms 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Let this truth inspire you to engage with God's word deeply and regularly. The Bible is full of examples of people who protected their hearts by obeying God's commands. Consider Daniel, who refused to defile himself with the king's food, or Joseph, who fled from Potiphar's wife. These individuals were able to resist negative influences because they submitted to the authority of Scripture and let it guide their actions. Proverbs 4 verse 23 states, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. This verse emphasizes the importance of guarding your heart and the central role that Scripture plays in this process. By seeking guidance from the Bible, you're arming yourself with the wisdom and truth you need to resist negative influences. Ultimately, it's through a steady diet of Scripture that you'll cultivate a heart that's firmly rooted in God's love and truth. Chapter 4 Pray for Discernment and Strength In addition to immersing yourself in Scripture, it's equally important that you pray for discernment and strength. Prayer isn't merely a religious exercise but a powerful tool that aligns your heart with God's will. It's through prayer that you can ask God to give you the wisdom to discern right from wrong, and the strength to choose the right path. Remember, discernment isn't just about distinguishing good from evil, it's about distinguishing the best from the good. Hebrews 5 verse 14 says, But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. With prayer, you're asking God to help you go beyond the surface, to see the hidden motives and consequences of actions, words, and thoughts. Pray for strength too, because having discernment isn't enough if you don't have the strength to follow through. Rely on God's strength, not your own. In 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 10, Apostle Paul shares, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So I'll boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Pray continually, and in every situation. Pray for discernment to spot the negative influences that may sway your heart, and for strength to resist them. As you nurture your relationship with God through prayer, you'll find your heart becoming more aligned with God's, and more guarded against negative influences. Chapter 5 Practice Forgiveness and Grace Cultivating a heart that's essential to forgive and abundant in grace is the third important step in safeguarding against negative influences. The Bible, in Ephesians 4 verse 32, exhorts us to be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. When you practice forgiveness, you free your heart of bitterness, resentment, and negativity, replacing them with peace and love. Forgiveness doesn't mean you ignore someone's wrongdoing. Instead, you acknowledge it but choose to show grace, just as God does for us. God's grace isn't earned, it's freely given. And you're called to extend that same grace to others, even when they don't deserve it. You might ask, how do I genuinely forgive when I've been deeply hurt? It's not easy, but remember, forgiveness is a process. It takes time and God's strength. Pray for a heart of forgiveness. Ask God to help you see the person who hurt you through his eyes. Remember, God forgave you much, so you could forgive others. Hebrews 12 verse 15 warns us, See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Holding on to unforgiveness is like letting a bitter root grow in your heart. This root can sprout into various negative emotions, affecting your mental, spiritual, and physical health. Chapter 6 Surround Yourself with Positivity Embracing positivity isn't merely about maintaining an optimistic outlook, it's also about choosing to surround yourself with individuals who reflect God's love and light. The Bible instructs us to seek out company that strengthens our faith and guides us towards righteousness. As Proverbs 27 verse 17 states, Iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. By choosing friends who embody Christian virtues, you become better equipped to guard your heart against negative influences. Remember, choosing your social circle is an active process. 
You can't always control the world around you, but you can certainly decide who you invite into your life. You're encouraged to create a community that mirrors the teachings of Jesus Christ. In Corinthians 15:33, it's written, Do not be deceived, bad company corrupts good morals. Through this, there's a recognition of the importance of choosing our company wisely in order to preserve our moral integrity. Furthermore, surrounding yourself with positivity also includes consuming positive and wholesome content. Philippians 4 verse 8 advises, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Make it a habit to fill your mind with uplifting and inspiring messages that align with God's Word. Chapter 7 Reflect on your own actions While you're carefully selecting your social circle and the content you consume, it's equally important to examine your own actions and behaviors. This self-reflection is vital because it's not just the external influences that shape your heart, but also your own actions and attitudes. As Paul wrote in Galatians 6 verse 4, each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone, without comparing themselves to someone else. By regularly evaluating your actions, you'll be better able to guard your heart against negative influences. Remember, you're not doing this to beat yourself up or to wallow in guilt. 1 John 1 verse 9 assures us, if we confess our sins, He's faithful, and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Rather, you're doing this to bring your actions into alignment with God's Word. Reflecting on your actions also involves acknowledging when you've been negatively influenced and making a conscious effort to change. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says, Whoever conceals their sins doesn't prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. This doesn't mean you'll be perfect. But it does mean you'll be working to live a life that's pleasing to God. In the end, guarding your heart against negative influences involves a combination of being mindful of external influences and regularly reflecting on your own actions. As you do this, remember the words of Psalm 139 verses 23 to 24, Search me, God, and know my heart, test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Chapter 8 Stay Rooted in Faith To safeguard your heart against negativity, it's essential to anchor your life firmly in faith, leaning on the solid foundation of God's Word. This isn't about blind allegiance, but a conscious decision to trust in His promises, even when the world around you seems in disarray. You see, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11 verse 1. In other words, it's trusting in God's goodness despite what your current circumstances might be telling you. Staying rooted in faith means keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, Hebrews 12 verse 2. It's about focusing more on His truth than on the lies that negativity often whispers in your ear. Just as a tree's roots absorb nutrients from the ground, so should your heart absorb the life-giving nourishment of God's Word. Take time each day to meditate on scriptures that bolster your faith. For example, Romans 10 verse 17 reminds us that, faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the Word of Christ. This continual renewal of your mind, Romans 12 verse 2, helps build a bulwark against negative influences. And remember, Faith isn't static. It's dynamic, growing stronger with each trial faced and overcome. James 1 verse 3 tells us that the testing of our faith produces perseverance. In other words, every challenge you face is an opportunity to deepen your faith, to draw closer to God, and to further fortify your heart against negativity. Staying rooted in faith isn't always easy, but it's always worth it. It's the key to guarding your heart against negative influence. Chapter 9 Embrace Humility and Compassion Cultivating a heart of humility and compassion not only enriches your life, but it's also a strong line of defense against the onslaught of negative influences. As the Bible instructs in Philippians 2 verse 3, 
do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility value others above yourselves. It's an antidote to pride, arrogance, and self-centeredness, traits that often invite negativity. Humility, fundamentally, is recognizing that you're not the center of the universe. It's accepting that you're not always right and that others may have valuable insights to offer. It's acknowledging that you're a work in progress, dependent on God's grace. This posture shields your heart, as it promotes openness, understanding, and respect for others, reducing the likelihood of being swayed by harmful influences. Compassion, on the other hand, is a heart that bleeds for the pain of others. It's not merely feeling sorry for someone, but being moved to action. As stated in Colossians 3 verse 12, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Compassion stirs up a desire to promote positivity, to alleviate suffering, and to uphold dignity. It's an effective barrier against negativity, as it propels you to focus on promoting goodness rather than being consumed by the bad. Embracing humility and compassion, as the Bible teaches, is a profound way to guard your heart against negative influences. It's not about being weak or passive, but about being grounded in God's love, exuding Christ-like character, and being an ambassador of His peace. Chapter 10. Guard Your Thoughts and Emotions. Just as Proverbs 4 verse 23 advises, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it, you must be vigilant in protecting your thoughts and emotions from negative influences. This isn't a mere suggestion, but a direct command from the Word of God. Your thoughts and emotions can either build you up or tear you down. They're like a rudder that directs your life, so it's essential to guard them against negativity. Your mind is a battlefield. Every day, you're bombarded by negative thoughts, doubts, and fears. This is where 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 comes in handy. It instructs us to take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. This means not allowing any negative thought to linger in your mind but instead, replacing it with God's truth. Similarly, your emotions are influenced by your thoughts. Unpleasant ideas can trigger unpleasant feelings including dread, worry, and rage. But Philippians 4 verse 8 provides a powerful antidote, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Chapter 11. Choose your company wisely. Surrounding yourself with positive influences is as important as guarding your own thoughts and emotions, as the company you keep can greatly impact your spiritual journey. It's no secret that negative influences can lead you astray, leaving you vulnerable to destructive thoughts and actions that can hinder your spiritual growth. The Bible provides clear guidance on this matter. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33, it's written, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character, this verse is a powerful reminder that the people you choose to associate with can shape your character and influence your behavior. Likewise, in Proverbs 13 verse 20, we read, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. It's a simple yet profound truth that the wisdom and character of the people you spend time with will inevitably rub off on you. Choosing your company wisely means intentionally seeking out those who inspire, uplift, and challenge you to grow in your faith. Surround yourself with people who reflect the love of Christ, who encourage you in your walk with God, and who support you in your pursuit of spiritual maturity. Remember, it's not about cutting people out of your life, but rather making conscious decisions about who you allow to influence your heart and mind. It's about establishing boundaries to protect your spiritual well-being. Remember that your spiritual journey isn't a solo mission. It's a journey shared with fellow believers who help each other grow in faith, wisdom, and love for God. Choose your company wisely, and guard your heart from negative influences. Chapter 12. Be mindful of your words. While guarding your heart from negative influences, it's important to remember that your words also hold immense power, 
as they can either build up or tear down, inspire faith or sow doubt. The Bible emphasizes this in Proverbs 18 verse 21, where it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Your words reflect your heart's state. If you're mindful of your words, you're also guarding your heart because out of it flows the issues of life, Proverbs 4 verse 23. Hence, it's vital to control your tongue, as it can defile the whole body and set your life on fire, James 3 verse 6. Training yourself to speak wisely isn't a walk in the park. It requires discipline, but more importantly, it requires a constant renewal of the mind, aligning your thoughts and words with the Word of God. Ephesians 4 verse 29 instructs, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. The process isn't overnight, and you'll have moments of weakness. But remember, God's grace is sufficient, and His power is made perfect in weakness, 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. So, keep praying for grace, keep practicing, and with time, you'll see your words becoming instruments of life and not death. Guard your heart by guarding your words. Chapter 13 Respond with love and kindness. In the same way, guarding your heart also means responding to others with love and kindness, a principle deeply rooted in biblical teachings. When you encounter negative influences, you're not left defenseless, you're equipped with the powerful tool of love, as Paul admonishes in Ephesians 4 verse 32, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. The Bible is clear on the transformative power of love and kindness. Proverbs 15 verse 1 says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Your response to negativity can either fuel the fire or douse the flames. By choosing love and kindness, you're not only guarding your heart but also potentially impacting others positively. Remember, it's not always about being right or having the last word. It's about reflecting the love of Christ, who in Luke 6 verses 27 to 28, encourages us to love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. In doing this, you're not giving in to negativity, you're rising above it. You mightn't change the world with a single act of kindness, but you can change someone's world, and that's a start. Love and kindness aren't signs of weakness, they're signs of strength, courage, and faithfulness to the teachings of Christ. Guard your heart by manifesting these virtues, despite the challenges you face. Remember, you're not alone in this journey, God's grace is sufficient for you. Chapter 14 Let go of resentment and bitterness. Another important step in protecting your heart is learning to let go of resentment and bitterness, as these feelings can distort your judgment and lead you astray from God's path of love and mercy. Ephesians 4 verses 31 to 32 instructs, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. This scripture clearly emphasizes the importance of releasing negative emotions and replacing them with kindness and forgiveness. Harboring resentment and bitterness can create a stronghold in your heart, preventing you from experiencing the fullness of God's love and grace. Consequently, it's crucial to surrender these feelings to God, trusting in His promise in 1 Peter 5 verse 7, cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. In doing so, you allow God's healing to permeate your heart, replacing the negative with His peace and love. Furthermore, holding on to bitterness can hinder your spiritual growth. Hebrews 12 verse 15 warns, See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Hence, by letting go of these harmful emotions, you're not only guarding your heart but also promoting spiritual wellness. Chapter 15 Focus on Gratitude and Joy Shifting your perspective towards gratitude and joy can serve as a powerful shield for your heart, deflecting negativity while drawing you closer to God's abundant blessings. The Bible emphasizes the importance of gratitude and joy over and over. 
In 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 16 to 18, Paul admonishes us to rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. When you focus on gratitude, you start to see the blessings in your life more clearly. You'll experience a shift from a heart burdened by negativity to a heart filled with thankfulness. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, give thanks to him and praise his name, Psalm 100 verse 4. God's word encourages us to focus on the gifts he's given us, and when we do, we find our hearts guarded against negativity. Similarly, joy isn't just a fleeting emotion but a deep-rooted conviction. It comes from knowing and trusting God, even in challenging circumstances. Nehemiah 8 verse 10 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. By focusing on joy, you're not ignoring life's difficulties, you're choosing to trust God amidst them. Chapter 16 Cultivate a Spirit of Peace Cultivating a spirit of peace, you're not only shielding your heart from negativity, but you're also aligning yourself with God's tranquil nature as described in the scriptures. Peace, as the Bible depicts, isn't merely the absence of conflict, but a profound sense of serenity and wholeness that permeates even amidst trials. It's God's gift to His children, a divine tranquility unaffected by worldly turmoil. In the book of Philippians, the Apostle Paul encourages, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7 This scripture highlights the potent role of prayer in cultivating peace. It's through honest conversations with God, expressing your fears, hopes, and desires, that His peace starts to inhabit your heart. Also, remember Jesus' words in John 14 verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I don't give to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. This divine peace, unlike worldly peace, isn't conditional. It's a constant companion, even in the face of adversity. As you cultivate this spirit of peace, you'll find your heart guarded against the negative influences that seek to sway you from your path. The peace of God, rooted in your heart, acts as a powerful shield, deflecting the arrows of negativity that come your way. So, seek peace, embrace it, and let it rule in your heart. Chapter 17 Stand Firm in Your Beliefs While embracing peace offers a powerful shield against negativity, it's equally important for you to stand firm in your beliefs, anchoring yourself in the truth of God's Word. Ephesians 6 verse 14 instructs us to stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. This truth not only secures our spiritual attire but also serves as a foundational piece keeping our faith intact. Remember, it's not about being unyielding or rigid, but about being rooted in God's truth. You're not simply resisting negative influence, you're aligning yourself with the eternal word that transcends earthly distractions. As Proverbs 4 verse 23 states, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. When your heart is rooted in God's truth, negativity can't easily penetrate it. Secondly, keep in mind that standing firm in your beliefs doesn't mean isolating yourself from the world. It's about being in the world, yet not of it. John 17 verses 14 to 15 says, I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they aren't of the world any more than I'm of the world. My prayer isn't that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one. This shows that we're to engage with the world, but not be swayed by its negative influences. Therefore, stand firm, guard your heart, and let God's word guide your steps. This way, you'll be able to resist negative influences and remain steadfast in your faith. Chapter 18 Extend grace to others. Often, endeavoring grace to others can be a powerful way to shield your heart from negativity, embodying the teachings of Ephesians 4 verse 32, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. 
This scripture teaches that by forgiving others, you're not just doing them a favor but you're also protecting your heart. Forgiveness isn't about condoning someone's wrong actions, but it's about letting go of the resentment and bitterness that can poison your heart. When you harbor negativity, it's your heart that suffers. But if you extend grace, it's like setting a prisoner free and realizing that the prisoner was you. However, extending grace isn't always easy. It's a conscious decision that we make daily, reflecting Jesus' teachings in Matthew 5 verse 44, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. When you're in a situation where you feel wronged or hurt, it might seem impossible to extend grace. But remember, grace isn't about what the person deserves, it's about what God has given us unconditionally, His love and forgiveness. Chapter 19 Trust in God's Protection in the face of adversity, trusting in God's protection is a robust shield for your heart, echoing the assurance found in Psalm 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. This trust isn't blind, but it's rooted in the absolute certainty of God's love, power, and faithfulness. It's a trust that not only shields your heart but also fills it with peace, as stated in Isaiah 26 verse 3, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, because they trust in you. God's protection isn't a passive force, it's an active and dynamic aspect of His character. When you trust in His protection, you're not just relying on a distant, impersonal power. You're resting in the arms of a loving Father who cares deeply for you, as reinforced in 1 Peter 5 verse 7, cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. God's protection doesn't mean you won't face trials or tribulations. Jesus himself said in John 16 verse 33, In this world you'll have trouble. But take heart. I've overcome the world. So, trusting in God's protection doesn't mean avoiding hardship but finding strength and refuge in Him amidst the storms. Moreover, trust in God's protection guards your heart against the influence of fear, doubt, and negativity. It allows you to stand firm and remain undeterred, even when faced with adversity. So, let your heart be steadfast, knowing that, the Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble, Psalm 9 verse 9. Chapter 20 Release Control and Surrender Relinquishing the reins and surrendering to God's will is another important way to guard your heart against negativity. It's a process that requires trust and faith in His divine plan. You might feel the urge to control everything in your life, but remember what Proverbs 19 verse 21 says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Surrendering isn't about giving up, it's about giving over to God, letting His will be done in your life. This doesn't mean you'll be free from trials, but you'll be equipped with God's strength to endure them. 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 10 reassures us, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Releasing control can be challenging, but it's one of the most liberating steps in your spiritual journey. When you let go and let God, you open your heart to His guidance and protection, safe from the negative influences that seek to infiltrate it. As you surrender, it's important to pray for God's will to be done in your life. This prayer not only guards your heart but also aligns it with God's purpose. Chapter 21 Cultivate a Heart of Empathy To summarize, cultivating a heart of empathy is a powerful way to shield your spirit from negativity, as it encourages you to understand and share the feelings of others, mirroring Christ's love and compassion. Essentially, it's about learning to see through the eyes of others, and feeling their joys and their pains. This act of empathy aligns with the teachings of the Bible, which calls us to love our neighbors as ourselves, Mark 12 verse 31. Empathy isn't about condoning wrong or endorsing vice, but about understanding and compassion. This understanding can create a buffer against negativity because it fosters tolerance and patience, reducing the likelihood of being swayed by harmful influences. It's important to remember that Jesus, our perfect example, demonstrated empathy throughout his ministry. He wept with those who wept and rejoiced with those who rejoiced, John 11 verse 35, Luke 15 verse 7. However, 
empathy must be balanced with discernment. The Bible warns in Proverbs 4 verse 23 to guard your heart above all else, for it's the source of life. Empathy shouldn't lead you to compromise biblical principles or to absorb the negative emotions of others. Instead, it should spur you to prayer, interceding on behalf of others and bringing their concerns before God. Chapter 22 Practice Self-Care and Self-Love While exercising empathy protects your heart, you must also care for yourself physically, emotionally, and spiritually, extending the same love to yourself as you do to others. Self-care isn't selfish, it's essential for maintaining a healthy heart, as is self-love. Both are biblical concepts. In Mark 12 verse 31, Jesus said, Love your neighbor as yourself. Implicit in this command is the understanding that you can't genuinely love others if you don't first love yourself. So, how can you practice self-care and self-love? Start by respecting your body as God's temple, 1 Corinthians 6 verses 19 to 20. This means eating well, exercising regularly, getting enough sleep, and avoiding harmful substances. Physically caring for yourself is a form of worship, as it honors the body God gave you. Emotionally, allow yourself to feel and express emotions, even the tough ones. Psalm 62 verse 8 encourages, Trust in Him at all times, O people, pour out your heart before Him, God is a refuge for us. It's okay to admit when you're not okay and seek help when needed. God understands your emotions and wants you to bring them to Him. Spiritually, spend time with God daily through prayer, reading, and meditating on His Word. Matthew 6 verse 6 advises, But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who's in secret. Cultivating a personal relationship with God strengthens your spiritual health and guards your heart against negative influences. Chapter 23 Lean on the support of others. Remember, you're not alone in your journey. Drawing strength from a community of believers is a powerful way to protect your heart against negative influences. Surrounding yourself with positive, like-minded individuals can help shield you from harmful negativity. As Proverbs 27 verse 17 states, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. This scripture emphasizes the importance of fellowship, reminding us that our spiritual growth is often a communal process. Engaging in a spiritual community offers more than just companionship, it provides an environment for mutual encouragement and reinforcement of faith. Hebrews 10 verses 24 to 25 advises, And let's consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. By sharing experiences, wisdom, and insights, you can help each other stay strong in faith and guard against negativity. However, remember to be discerning about the company you keep. As the Bible warns in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33, do not be deceived, bad company corrupts good morals, choose to associate with those who uplift you spiritually, rather than those who might pull you down. Lastly, don't hesitate to seek guidance from spiritual leaders and elders. Their experience and understanding of God's Word can provide invaluable assistance in your journey. As 1 Peter 5 verse 5 states, Young men, in the same way be submissive to those who are older. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Embrace the support of others as you work to protect your heart against negative influence. It's an essential step in your spiritual journey. Chapter 24 Find Strength in Prayer and Meditation Turn to prayer and meditation as your spiritual fortress, a haven where you can find solace and strength in God's presence. Now, you may wonder, how exactly does prayer and meditation fortify your heart? Philippians 4 verses 6-7 provides a profound answer, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In prayer, you're not just speaking to an unknown entity, you're communicating with the Creator, the One who knows you best. 
It's a divine dialogue that fosters intimacy with God, allowing His wisdom and love to permeate your heart, thereby shielding it from negative influences. Meditation, on the other hand, is your quiet time with God's Word. Joshua 1 verse 8 instructs, Keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. By meditating on His Word, you internalize God's teachings, reinforcing your heart's defenses against harmful external pressures. In essence, prayer and meditation serve as your spiritual workout, strengthening your heart's resistance to negativity. They're not just religious rituals, but essential components of your spiritual health regimen. So, keep praying, keep meditating, and let God's peace guard your heart. Chapter 25 Live out the principles of love. You're called to reflect God's love in your daily life, as the Bible instructs in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 14, let all that you do be done in love. This means showing kindness to all, forgiving and forgetting past wrongs, and practicing empathy every day. In doing so, you're not only guarding your heart against negative influences, but also manifesting the principles of love as Jesus did. Living out the principles of love necessitates showing kindness to all, just as Christ demonstrated through His teachings in the Bible. He implores us in Ephesians 4 verse 32, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. This isn't a mere suggestion, it's a divine command. It's important to understand that everyone you encounter is fighting a battle you know nothing about. Hence, extend grace and kindness, even when it's not reciprocated. This practice isn't merely a good deed, it's a spiritual discipline that guards your heart against the negative influences of bitterness and resentment. Building upon the act of kindness, another essential tenet of living out the principles of love is the practice of forgiveness, as emphasized in Colossians 3 verse 13, bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. This scripture highlights how crucial it's to let go of bitterness, resentment, and grudges. It's not about forgetting the hurt, it's about releasing the power it holds over you. As you forgive, you emulate the love of Christ, who forgave us unconditionally. This practice not only guards your heart against negative influences but also fosters inner peace and freedom. Remember, forgiveness isn't weakness, it's the ultimate expression of godly strength and love. In line with the teachings of Galatians 5 verses 22-23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, practicing empathy on a daily basis is a pivotal aspect of embodying Christian love. Your daily actions should reflect Christ's love. To do this, you must empathize with others, understanding their feelings, and showing kindness even when it's hard. This is a reflection of the love, kindness, and gentleness that the Spirit provides. Remember, an astonishing 91% of people struggle with negative influences, so you're not alone. Embrace the wisdom of Proverbs 4 verse 23, setting boundaries and seeking God's guidance. Pray for discernment, practice forgiveness, and remember to love yourself. Lean on your faith and those around you, and find solace in prayer. Live out the principles of love, for as you guard your heart, you guard your life. Keep your faith strong and your heart guarded against negativity. Thanks for listening.